Memorial Day, is often confused with Veterans Day. However, they are not the same. Veterans Day, is meant to commemorate and thank veterans, for their service to our country. Memorial Day on the other hand, is meant to memorialize and honor, the fallen men and women who lost, their lives in battle, while serving our country. Memorial Day is often used, as a way to gather, with family and friends. This is fine, as long as those who paid the ultimate price, are not forgotten in the process. The poppy flower is also significant, and used to symbolize Memorial Day. Many years ago, after the wars in Europe, dormant poppy seeds were all over, in the trampled and worn down battlefields. Then came World War I, and the traffic on the seeds, germinated them, and after the war, they began to grow. There were fields upon fields, of beautiful red poppies. What an amazing sight it was, after such a terrible time in history. I would like to introduce, one of my special guests today. A very fine man, that really needs no introduction, at all. Welcome, please General George, Fritz Patton. Thank you Ben. I will now read for you and your audience, a list of casualties and POW MIAs, which mean prisoners of war and missing in action. From most of the major conflicts that the United States has been involved in, the statistical numbers I am going to read are for American personnel only. American Revolutionary War, 6,824 killed in battle, 25,000 to 70,000 dead from all causes. Overall casualties, up to 50,000. POW, 18,152. MIA, 1,426. American Civil War, North. Union, 140,414 killed in action, 365,000 total dead. South Confederacy, 72,524 killed in action from the South, 260,000 total dead. POW and MIA, Union, 194,743, Confederacy, 214,865. World War I killed in action 116,516 POW, MIA, 7,470. World War II killed in action 416,800. POW 124,079, MIA 30,314. Korean War. Killed in action 36,574. POW MIA 4,714. Vietnam War. The official count of killed in action from the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund is currently 58,281. POW MIA 1,584. Gulf War, killed in action, 147. POW MIA 52. Iraq War, killed in action, 3,481. War in Afghanistan, killed in action, 1,856. The most current statistics for the War on Terror are from 2018. 81,700 POW, MIA still remain, with 75% of them believed to be from the Indo-Pacific conflicts. Over 41,000 are presumed lost at sea. Very humbling, General Patton, very, very humbling. Thank you for that reading. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, is a must-visit, memorial in the United States. It is absolutely mind-blowing how the Guardsmen, and women, can be completely on point, with each move they make. Here to tell the story of how the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier began in America, is Sergeant Edward F. Younger, of Headquarters Company, 2nd Battalion, 50th Infantry, American Forces in Germany. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is Arlington National Cemetery's most iconic memorial. The neoclassical, white marble sarcophagus stands, atop a hill overlooking Washington, D.C. Since 1921, it has provided a final resting place for one of America's unidentified World War I service members. 
and unknowns from later wars were added in 1958 and 1984. The tomb has also served as a place of mourning and a site for reflection on military service. Through the ages, one of the consequences of warfare, has been large numbers of unidentified dead. Sometimes unidentified remains resulted from poor record keeping, the damage that weapons of war, inflicted on bodies, or the haste required to bury the dead, and mark grave sites. In the United States prior to the Civil War, unidentified remains were often buried in mass graves. At Arlington National Cemetery, these include unknown soldiers and sailors from the War of 1812 who were discovered buried at the Washington Navy Yard and reburied at Arlington National Cemetery in 1905. During the Civil War, high casualty rates, and lack of personal identification, led to large numbers of unknowns, originally buried along marching routes or battlefields. The system of national cemeteries, was established in 1862 to ensure the proper burial, of all service members. Still, many unknown remains were recovered in the years following the Civil War. At Arlington National Cemetery, there are individual Civil War unknown burials, as well as the remains of 2,111 Union and Confederate soldiers buried beneath the tomb of the Civil War unknowns. While exact numbers are unknown, estimates indicate that nearly half of the Civil War dead were never identified. During the Spanish-American War, the U.S. military's policy was to repatriate, return to the United States, the bodies of service members who died abroad. New Army regulations required that soldiers be buried in temporary graves with identifying information. The Army's Quartermaster Corps, which oversaw burials and repatriation of bodies, employed a burial corps. Identification rates went up to significantly. During World War I, U.S. service members received aluminum identification discs, the precursors to dog tags, to aid the process of identifying remains. The War Department created a new unit in the Quartermaster Corps, the Graves Registration Service, to oversee burials. During and after World War I, however, Americans debated whether bodies should be repatriated. With more than 100,000 U.S. casualties, compared to fewer than 3,000 in the Spanish-American War, repatriation was more challenging. France and Great Britain, which suffered significantly higher casualties, and more unknown dead than did the United States, barred repatriation of their citizens' remains. To ease the grief of their citizens, France and Great Britain each repatriated and buried one unknown soldier, on Armistice Day, November 11, 1920. Great Britain buried its unknown warrior inside Westminster Abbey in London, and France buried its unknown soldier, at the base of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. These unknowns would stand in for other British and French service members whose remains could not be identified. The American policy, by contrast, gave options to families of the war dead. If requested by the next of kin, the remains of service members who died in Europe, would be transported to anywhere in the United States, at no cost to the family. Or, families could choose to bury their dead, at permanent U.S. military cemeteries to be established in Europe. In December 1920, New York Congressman and World War I veteran, Hamilton Fish Jr. proposed legislation that provided for the interment of one, unknown American soldier at a special tomb, to be built in Arlington National Cemetery. The purpose of the legislation was, to bring home the body of an unknown American warrior who in himself, represents no section, creed, or race in the late war and who typifies, moreover, the soul of America, and the supreme sacrifice of her heroic dead. In October 1921, four bodies of unidentified U.S. military personnel were exhumed from different American military cemeteries in France. On October 23, 1921, the four caskets arrived at the City Hall of Chalons-sur-Marne, now called chalon en champagne France. Town officials and members of the U.S. Army's Quartermaster Corps, had prepared the City Hall for the selection ceremony. Early on the morning of October 24, 1921, Major Robert P. Harbold of the Quartermaster Corps, aided by French and American soldiers, rearranged the caskets so that each rested on a shipping case, other than the one in which it had arrived. Major Harbold then chose me, to select the unknown soldier, by placing a spray of white roses on one of the caskets. From chalon sur marne the unknown journeyed by caisson and rail to the port town of Le Havre, France. From Le Havre, 
the USS Olympia transported the unknown soldier's casket to Washington, D.C. The unknown arrived at the Washington Navy Yard on November 9, 1921. After arriving in Washington, D.C., on November 9, 1921, the unknown lay in state in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda. About 90,000 visitors paid their respects during the public visiting period on November 10, 1921. On November 11, 1921, the unknown was placed on a horse-drawn caisson, and carried in a procession through Washington, D.C., and across the Potomac River. A state funeral ceremony was held at Arlington National Cemetery's new Memorial Amphitheater, and the unknown was interred in the tomb of the unknown soldier. Nationwide, Americans observed two minutes of silence at the beginning of the ceremony. President Warren G. Harding officiated at the ceremony, and placed the Medal of Honor, the nation's highest military decoration, on the casket. Numerous foreign dignitaries, presented their nation's highest awards, as well. The tomb sarcophagus is decorated, with three wreaths on each side panel, north and south. On the front, east, three figures represent peace, victory, and valor. The back, west, features the inscription, Here rests in honored glory, an American soldier known, but to God. Following World War II, some Americans supported the idea of interring, and honoring an unknown from that war. However, the start of the Korean War, in 1950, delayed those plans. In August 1956, President Dwight D. Eisenhower approved the selection, and interment of unknowns from both World War II and Korea. Fought on four continents, World War II complicated the selection of an unknown. The chosen unknown needed to represent, all unidentified American dead, not just those from one theater of the war. In 1958, the Army exhumed 13 bodies from military cemeteries across North Africa and Europe, and brought them to the Epinal American Cemetery, and Memorial in France. On May 12, 1958, Major General Edward J. O'Neill, placed a red and white wreath, on one of the 13 caskets, selecting the unknown who would represent the transatlantic, Europe and North Africa, theater of World War II. The selected casket was then taken aboard USS Blandy, for its journey to the United States. To represent the Pacific theater of World War II, the Army exhumed five bodies from Fort McKinley American Cemetery in the Philippines, now called Manila American Cemetery, and the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific, the Punch Bowl, in Hawaii. At the same time, they exhumed four bodies from the Korean War, that were also buried at the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific. All nine caskets were brought to Hickam Air Force Base Hawaii. On May 15, 1958, Army Master Sergeant Ned Lyle, selected the Korean War Unknown. The next day, Air Force Colonel Glenn T. Eagleston, selected the World War II Trans-Pacific Unknown. Both caskets were flown to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, before being loaded aboard the USS Boston. The USS Blandy and USS Boston, met the USS Canberra off the coast of Virginia. On May 26, 1958, all three caskets were placed on the deck of the Canberra, with the Korean War unknown placed between the two World War II unknowns. Navy Hospital Corpsman First Class, William R. Charette, a Medal of Honor recipient from the Korean War, then selected the World War II unknown. The caskets of the World War II, and Korean War unknowns, were then transported to Washington, D.C., aboard the USS Blandy, while the remaining World War II unknown received a solemn burial at sea. Both unknowns arrived in Washington, D.C. on May 28, 1958 and lay in state, in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda for two days. Two days later, the unknowns were transported to Arlington National Cemetery, and interred in crypts, to the west of the World War I unknown. Before the Vietnam War ended, Arlington National Cemetery began making preparations, to add a third crypt to the tomb. However, many people believe that advances in technology, would mean that all remains from Vietnam, could eventually be identified. In response to mounting political pressure to recognize a Vietnam War unknown, President Jimmy Carter and Max Cleland, Administrator of the United States Veteran Administration and a Vietnam veteran, dedicated a bronze plaque, honoring American service members, in the Vietnam War on Veterans Day, November 11, 1978, at Memorial Amphitheater. By May 1984, 
only one set of recovered American remains from Vietnam, had not been fully identified. In a ceremony held at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii on May 17, 1984, Medal of Honor recipient Marine Corps Sergeant Major Alan J. Kellogg Jr., designated the remains as the Vietnam War Unknown. The casket was then transported to Travis Air Force Base, California aboard the USS Bruton. In California, the Vietnam War Unknown was loaded on a C-141B Starlifter, and flown to Andrews Air Force Base, Maryland. The Vietnam War Unknown, lay in state in the U.S. Capitol Rotunda from May 25 to 28, 1984. On Memorial Day, May 28, a military procession transported the casket to Arlington National Cemetery for burial. On Memorial Day 1984, President Ronald Reagan presided over the interment ceremony at Arlington. In his eulogy, Reagan assured the audience, that the government would continue looking for the Vietnam War's missing in action, MIA, personnel. Meanwhile, the Vietnam War unknown would lay at rest, at the tomb of the unknown soldier for almost 14 years. The Department of Defense and Civilian Partners, continued working to identify remains recovered from Vietnam. Through these efforts, they reviewed evidence that suggested the Vietnam War unknown was likely Air Force First Lieutenant Michael Joseph Blassie, a pilot who had been shot down in 1972. At the request of Blassie's family, the Department of Defense exhumed the remains, from the Vietnam Unknown's crypt on May 14, 1998. Using DNA testing, scientists positively identified the remains, as those of Blassie. In accordance with the wishes of his family, Blassie, was reinterred at Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery, in St. Louis, Missouri. The crypt designated for the Vietnam War unknown remains vacant. On September 17, 1999, National PAL-MIA Recognition Day, it was rededicated to honor all missing U.S. service members from the Vietnam War. In March 1926, soldiers from nearby Fort Myer were first assigned to guard the tomb of the unknown soldier. The guards, present only during daylight hours, discouraged visitors from climbing or stepping on the tomb. In 1937, the guards became a 24-7 presence, standing watch over the unknown soldier at all times. The 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, known as the Old Guard, was designated as the Army's official ceremonial unit on April 6, 1948. At that time, the Old Guard began guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier, Soldiers of the Old Guard also serve as escorts to the President, and conduct military ceremonies in, and around Washington, D.C., including military funeral escorts at Arlington National Cemetery. Soldiers who volunteer to become tomb guards, must undergo a strict selection process and intensive training. Each element of the tomb guard's routine has meaning. The guard marches 21 steps down the black mat behind the tomb, turns and faces east for 21 seconds, turns and faces north for 21 seconds, and then takes 21 steps down the mat. Next, the guard executes a sharp shoulder arms movement to place his slash or weapon on the shoulder closest to the visitors, signifying that he or she stands between the tomb and any possible threat. The number 21 symbolizes the highest symbolic military honor that can be bestowed, the 21-gun salute. Laying a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier has long been a way for individuals and organizations to honor the sacrifices of American service members. Presidents, politicians, public figures and foreign dignitaries have all paid their respects in this way. The opportunity to participate in a wreath-laying ceremony is also open to the general public, including school groups. In addition, each year, millions of people from around the world visit the tomb of the unknown soldier. Some visit to honor military service and sacrifice, some to mourn a loved one, and some because of the tomb's historical and national significance. 100 years after the World War I unknown's burial, the tomb of the unknown soldier continues to be a powerful symbol of service and sacrifice, mourning, and memory. That was such a wonderful opportunity, being able to speak of the history regarding the tomb of the unknown soldier. More people need to learn such history as that these days. Well I have one final special guest for you all today. First, I want to tell you a bit about her. Moina Michael, is a wonderful woman. She wrote a poem, in response to In Flanders Fields, written by John McRae, after World War II. 
Moina began selling poppy flowers after she wrote her poem, to raise money for veterans wounded from the war. So please, without further ado, please give a very warm welcome to Miss Moina Michael. We shall keep the faith. Oh, you who sleep in Flanders fields, sleep sweet to rise anew. We caught the torch you threw, and, holding high, we keep the faith with all who died. We cherish, too, the poppy red that grows on fields where valor led. It seems to signal to the skies that blood of heroes never dies, but lends a luster to the red of the flower that blooms above the dead in Flanders fields. And now the torch and poppy red we wear in honor of our dead. Fear not that ye have died for naught, we'll teach the lesson that ye wrought in Flanders fields. 